Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Sri Ayer. Joining me is Sumit Pirji and we are going to be looking at the Middle East scenarios. A lot of action happening. Uh, the one attack of Israel that they said, oh, there was nothing, no, nothing was damaged, but there is a lot of uh, hidden content there. We're going to be analyzing some of that. So please like this video and if you're not already subscribed to our channel, kindly consider subscribing. Let's welcome Sumit Pirji. Sumit Ji, Namaskar, Ram Ram, Radhe Radhe, how are you? Uh, sir, Jai Sia Ram, Radhe Radhe, all good and fine by the grip of Lord Mahakal and your Ashir Watson. Many, many of uh, our, you know, uh, our readers, they are a very interesting folk. Some of them ask, oh, you put uh, Tilak, are you doing it for program or are you doing it for the whole day? And what sort of a question is that, guys? I mean, if I go out, I always leave whatever is on my matha is there. Sometimes Correct. it will not be there also. Sometimes, look, this is, I, I am proud to be a Sanatani and I'm going to wear it on my forehead. It doesn't matter what others think. That's all I wanted to say. Sarji, um, let's take a quick look at what is happening in uh, uh, Israel. Israel has now proven that Iran's defense systems are not worth the paper they are written on. These were the S-300 anti-aircraft missiles that they had put in Syria in the anticipation that if Israel comes, we'll be able to take them down. First, I think Israel took them down. But the interesting thing that people are saying is, how come we are not able to see the missiles go from Israel all the way to Iran? There was one hit in Isfahan and they could not find out where that thing came from until somebody did a little bit more deeper research and they found that these were micro drones and they were launched from within Iran. So now the possibility is that perhaps Iran has its own resistance movement, supported or not supported by Mossad. I don't know that. So I'm just setting this table here. Viewers, this is going to be a fascinating session because we are going to look at different angles. So this is one. Second, US has gone in and taken out an Iran-backed militia movement called PMF just south of Baghdad. See, what US and Israel now have decided is, first, they have shown Iran its place. Second of all, now all these H's, Hamas, Hezbollah, uh, uh, Houthis, all of them know that if the other side decides to up the ante, they'll get blown away. So there is there is there is more heat coming also. Today, in about a few hours, the United States Congress is going to vote on another aid bill to both Ukraine as well as Israel. This is a bipartisan bill that will pass, it will also pass by the Senate and it will be signed by the president because it's bipartisan. That's why. So what it also means is Israel gets a boost. They have also been attacking Rafa yesterday. Whatever it is, today we are seeing some accounts being settled. This is how I see it. Sumitji, please explain and expand on this because you've been following this thing much more closely than me. Over to you. Uh, sir, in the name of Bhagavan Shri Ganesha, let's do the Shri Ganesha of this vlog. You see, uh, there's a saying in Hindi, Vinash Kale Viprit Buddhi. You know, that is exactly what happened to Hidan. The beard man thought he can hold the world perpetually to ransom because he has got some ICBM, some uh, ballistic missiles and some cruise missiles and he can threaten the whole world. I have been talking on P Gurus, other channels and even on national TV that the world's patience with Khomeini and Iran is running out. Because now you cannot perpetually hold the world to a ransom. You cannot say, okay, I'm going to do this, I'm going to tomorrow, I'm going to do it tomorrow, third day, I'm going to do this. Now, if, you, if we go back a little bit and rewind and then start joining the dots. Now, if you look at today, what the scenarios, what you have told, sir, and what we are seeing all are going to happen is that it is exactly panning to the idea, is exactly fitting into the blocks. It's like you fit blocks into the puzzle. What we dis what we discussed on Pigoro was when the embassy of Iran in Syria was attacked. I told you that they are provoking Khomeini up to here now. If he doesn't do anything, he will lose his power. He'll be out of business. His carders will go and this all jihadi carders will be decimated. So they are attacked, they attacked his embassy, they killed his revolutionary guard commanders to provoke him. And what did he do? He thought that he could send 300 missiles, thinking that the iron drone will be saturated and uh, the television and all will be decimated. Then he'll say, uh, you know, we won, we won, we won. But 99.9% .9 of the missiles were shot down by uh, iron drone and the new technology which Israelis have got wherein they were throwing a lot of drones in the air, those bogies kind of a thing. No, those bogies which are tubular drones and uh, maybe they have heat flares or not. 
Now these missiles are coming and hitting them, not the actual you know targets on the ground. In a way, Israel showed that militarily they are much superior, they are much ahead in the game. And who knows that uh, Israel only has Iron Dome. Maybe they have something else which we don't know. There's also a possibility. Now, if you look at the things what we have seen here. Now, after that, uh, we were thinking that what will be the Israel's attack. Now, Israel is very smart. It doesn't confirm, neither denies attack. Iran has it. Hey, ne, mujhe laga nahi, hey. is, Iran is like a child. When I was a kid, we, were, we used to study in a boys' school, sir, and we will not do our homework and all. We'll get both of them. No, and when we were young, we used to get both of them. Nowadays, nobody hates anybody. Now, so when when I would look at my classmates like this, they will all laugh at me and start looking. Then I'll say, Mujhe to lagi nahi. I'll say, Mujhe to lagi nahi. I'll act as a child. Exactly, Iran was acting like that kiddo in the school. Oh, no, 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 nothing got hit. We're not hit. We're just, just some players. I, exactly that plausible denial of Pakistan. When Balakot, they were hit, these Pakistanis, they said, no, some crows got killed, some trees had fallen. It was a storm that came and some trees had fallen. Exactly that thing, because when they are caught with their pants down, they don't know where to hide. They are just running hatter scatter like headless chickens. And they say, nothing, nothing, we don't, we didn't get it, we didn't get it, nothing happened, nothing happened, nothing happened. And yesterday, International Atomic Energy Commission also released a report saying, look, the atomic installations in Iran are fine. That is up till yesterday. Now, what happened after that? We don't know. Now, what we have been contemplating and what we have been working on, what we also released a few shots on, and P is what is the game plan? The game plan of Iran has three phases, sir. Sorry, Israel. I always, you know, this Iran and Israel all both start with I, it's a slip of time. So bear with me. Israel's game plan has uh, three phases. First, when they attacked, the saturation strike of Iran did not go. It has failed. That's the point. Number one, we have to take that in the backdrop. Now, Israel wanted to attack, but do a limited attack. What is the idea? Between Israel and uh, Iran, there is Iraq and Syria. Now, as you rightly said, that place, their advanced air defense systems and all in place so that, you know, they could see what is happening and if there are any things coming, they could intercept them there. That is a given scenario. Now, looking at the scenario, Israel thought of a very smart move. Let's do a targeted strike. By doing a targeted strike, we'll assess three things. How good is the air defense system? How efficient does it work? And do we have weaponry which can pierce that? And let's not forget anything. one more thing. Any air defense system is as good as the number of rockets or the interception rockets you have to intercept the target. If you don't have rockets, it's a gun without a bullets. And no air defense system, which is imported from anywhere, will have infinite rockets. You will not have 20,000, 50,000 rockets to, you know, kind of, uh, you know, intercept the, which are the uh, missiles which are coming in. That's point number one. Point number two was when we know what their position is, now we can plan the second big attack. My gut tells me, gut, no logic. My gut tells me it will be attack even from the sea this time. Take my word, sir. I'm predicting this. There'll be attack even from the sea. Israel is planning a much bigger attack because now they have, you know, got a hang of what exactly do these Iranis have. And this is worth nothing. Third thing will be now when they will attack this time, they have to budget in their retaliation. Now, if the retaliation comes, what is the plan of Israel? That is the third phase which they are budgeting and they are doing the scenario-based calculations. Now, United States of America is already into the game. They are, they are actively intercepting those missiles. UK is exactly working with them. And there are other countries which are supporting them. Here, we have, we have uh, if you look at the Iranian side, we have Syria with them, we have Yemen with them. And Russia is saying, I will intervene. Why Russia will intervene, we'll come to that also. This was the scenario up to last night, you know. Now, what we came to know since today morning, what is new? This is something which is in the open domain. We have spoken about it broadly through our shorts or through our short videos. Yourself, myself and all. Now, what is the new, sir? Three revelations have come new. I'll let me have silent my phone. I think this is... Uh, the three revelations which have come new. First of all, the Ishif Khan, what is that? Ishfa Khan is the name of the... Place. Ishfa Khan, Ishfa Khan. Is the second biggest city of Iran. But with the Ishfikan, is, there is a very strategic relevance of this. This has the biggest air base of Iran. F-14 uh, fighters, which Iran has asked based out of this air base. This air base has underground bankers. And this air base is also believed to have a stockpile of radioactive material. And if there are some tactical weapons, if at all they are, that are in this base. This base was considered highly guarded. 
highly secret and state of the art as per Khamenei. Because he got a hallucination in the dream and he said, it's the state of the art. Now, what guards it can be? Two things. There's a Chinese, uh, this missile interception system, which is good for nothing. It's like a useless Chinese toy, which you, you know, put in the dustbin after five hours. Second is the Russian S-300. Now, they thought that if we put two defense systems, that will be good enough to guard this base from any foreign attacks. The challenge with the Chinese system is it's an outdated system, it's useless, and it is good for nothing. And when you talk about the Russian system, it's an S-300. No, you wanted to make a point, Jay. So, Ji, you have you just given a new possibility. We don't know if the Syrian S-300s were original Russian S-300s or they were the knockoffs of China's S-300, which did not work when India's BrahMos accidentally fired and accidentally went 120 kilometers into Pakistan Ex and fell <laughs> accidentally. So, Ex that is another point there. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> so, you know, the, basically, these Pakistanis that time had HQ-9s and HQ-10s, which have an interception out to 50 kilometers. Now, let me get you into the S-300. The first thing what you have to understand, S-300 is an outdated machine today. Today, what we have as India is S-450. And what Russians have is a S-500 or a S-550, which they are not selling to anybody. Basically, there are two things into the system which you have to understand. One is, what is the difference between 300 and 400? Broadly, I'll touch on that. 300... The 400 has a missile which can intercept at more than 400 kilometers. 450, it is believed, there is no proof in the open forum that this interception missile can go up to 600 kilometers. So if there's a projectile which is 600 kilometers away with the S400 or 450, with 400 up to 400, but with 450, maybe 500, 600 kilometers, you can intercept it. That is the difference. Second thing is the proximity fuse. What is the proximity fuse? Proximity fuse is, if I miss the, let's say it's a fighter jet or all, if I miss it, it is able to dodge me. But when I come and near to it by a X amount of meters or maybe a kilometer or so, it blows up. So when it blows up, it brings that projectile or that jet or whatever with it. So the that, that endurance of the proximity fuse and that interception missile. Now, when you talk of this interception missile, there needs a very advanced phase array radar also, which has to come with it. When Russians gave Chinese S-300, First, there was a lot of hue and cry in, uh, you know, Russia. Why should you give to them? They will reverse generate. But Russians then said, okay, let's give them 300. They did not give them 400. They did not give them 450. There's a hinted message in that. I'll come to that. Now, what does that mean? That means S-300 is not a technology which today can handle a BrahMos, which can handle a supersonic and hypersonic missiles. Because BrahMos is the world's fastest supersonic cruise missile. It cannot handle it. So, which is good news for India. Now, what we have seen in the Israel and in Syria and all, it's a very good news for India. That means S-300 is not good enough to handle a Brahmos or any supersonic or hypersonic missile because it's an outdated technology. Why did Russians give it to Chinese? They said, by the time they will re reverse engine and copying, we'll be at S-1000. So when we will be at S-1000, S-300 of if will be of no use to them. So Russians know that Chinese will try to reverse engine them and with the accuracy and all, this will be not good for nothing. A lot of Chinese missile systems, which they don't name in HS, S, S series, are basically deprived or, you know, taken out from S-300. So the good news for India today is, where I see for my country, is that if S-300 cannot detect or intercept Israeli missiles, it can definitely not detect or, uh, you know, intercept Indian missiles going into China or Pakistan. Pakistan doesn't have it. China has it. So it doesn't matter. So it's a very good news for me. I'm relieved. Israel is equally relieved because now they don't have to worry about S-300. But who is very unhappy? It's Russians. Because Russians know if S-300 doesn't work, it brings a brand name to them. But Russians on record are saying it's a very outdated equipment. It's like a 486 machine. If you think you have a 486 machine and you can run a Zoom or a this Weeb, uh, you know, live telecast on it, you should be lucky. Technically, 486 is not designed to handle it. Right? So, can a computer hai? There's a computer you can be happy with a big monitor and a fancy room, but it's not good enough for the job. So this combination of S300 plus Chinese air defense system at this air base did not work. Now the rumor says, uh, my sources tell me, few uh, the missiles have hit the air base, right? Now they have destroyed the Chinese radars which were there. S300 could not do much. Even some F14s have been destroyed. Six or eight or ten F-14s have been also destroyed in the attack. And Iran is shaking. Iran is shitting in their pants. 
they are having goosebumps and they have they are sweating in the air conditioner you know why couple of things three things first mossad knows where is your assets and where and where all they are kept and it is also believed a lot of those aerial attack was started or initiated from this air base only the air base or this 300 kind of attack 300 plus was from this ashwakan air base only where it is initiated so mossad is telling you i know where is your air base i know where the attack came from i know where are your most potent jets i don't know how serviceable they are because f14s are there but uh, you know how serviceable they are what is the availability of the fleet because availability of the fleet depends upon the spares availability and the ultra modern spares availability so if the spares availability is low fleet's availability is hardly anything because in when you talk of jets and helicopter there are two lives one is a run life one is a calendar life calendar life means if i have a jet parked here and for 3 months something has to change even if i don't fly it for a minute after 3 months that thing has to be changed so that is called a calendar life so helicopters and jets have a run life and a calendar life so how effective is that f14 we don't know what is the availability of the fleet we don't know so the fleet has been destroyed now this ashraf khan air base is where khomeini and all the pride we are going to attack here we are going to do this we are going to do this even yesterday iran issued a warning to israel that we know where your nuclear facilities are but looking at what mossad has done to you you are you will never reach those nuclear facilities you have to protect yours first and this is another threat which is another hypothesis here that is true sir that possibly if we talk of these tactical warheads they are given to them by pakistan remember we talked on p gurus and i talked on various other forums and tv that uh, 400% more enriched uranium is with iran for what and basically pakistanis couple of days back also pledged that will help will support iran you know if they have they get into a fight with americans and and the jews now pakistan doesn't have a nuclear bomb it is in a base in saudi arabia and dera ghazi khan is defunct so what pakistan can definitely do whatever the enriched uranium of iran is they can help them to make tactical warheads with the impact radius of maybe half a kilometer so it is believed as per my sources it is believed that iran has those couple of them they have the pakistanis have done the dirty job again bloody pakistanis are you know they can sell everything for money they went there and they did the dirty job so here and these these warheads are again believed to be in this way so mossad sends you very clear thing second you know now your air defense is good for nothing ashfa khan af ashfahan isfahan 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 my pronunciation may not be so good is isfahan now the mossad knows your weapons are there your strategic assets are there your fighter fleet is there two missile systems cannot protect you and we can take out anything in iran at our will this is a very very strong message that is why iran is trying to cover iran and think kuch nahi hua kuch nahi hua kuch nahi hua they are trying to take it will and even those uh, what do you call them mini micro quadruple drones micro drones micro drones yeah, yeah they were they were found there so usually these drones are very difficult to be detected by any radar and they can come hit and do the job so mossad sends a very clear message now we also know there are two more attacks which happened one attack happened uh, near baghdad the, on the outskirts of baghdad is is the is the another one which you, which you mentioned so not this one another one now these uh, jihadi organizations were having a meeting there the groups which support iran they were having a meeting there there was a building where the meeting was happening exactly at the time when the meeting was happening exactly at the time when these all commanders had got together israel comes and hits that so mossad is sending you a message wherever you are we know where the meetings are happen we can exactly take you out in a country where the meetings happen third thing we also know for sure that the attacks have also happened in uh, syrian territory one to take out those advanced uh, those uh, anti missile batteries and to also kind of uh, you know take out those sub strategic radar sites so syrian soil has been also attacked so we have iran attack we have iraq attack and we have syrian soil attack now what we don't know right now were all the attacks done by israel or was it, well americans also doing a little bit here and there there is a possibility americans also did a little bit here and there though iran had warned america keep away from that i told mr khamen you must have lost your head americans are already in the game who are you trying to keep away from there nobody and let me also remind you one thing day before yesterday in united nations israel's permanent representative to the united nations said what i have been saying and shouting my lungs out since october ha huh? last year i am been shouting my lungs out on one thing he said when october 7th happened 
This was planned and orchestrated by Iran in Iran and executed through Hamas. Now pull all my videos, pull all my recordings from Piguru or wherever you want to put. I have been telling you from day one. I have been predicting this. Now my predictions do not matter. But now today Israel is saying this. And you know what does the Irani foreign minister do? He laughs at it and he's picking his teeth. This is the plight we are talking about. I was always telling you this is all planned by Iran. This is all done by Iran. Only Hamas is being used to do the dirty work. It is not the brainchild of Hamas. Hamas is not capable of doing this kind of attack. So that is another aspect which you have to remember. Now coming back to our story. Now this is also believed that in there is a place called Tabriz. It's one of the one of the big cities of Iran that also got attacked. And in Tabriz, we know that at least six IF jets came in. They were not intercepted by anybody. They did the job. They destroyed what they had to destroy and they went back. So you have drones coming in, you have missiles coming in, you have IF coming in, that is Israeli Air Force, not Indian Air Force. Israeli Air Force coming in, they destroyed or dismantled the targets they wanted and they went back without anybody touching them. Now Iran is saying, Lagani, I was not hit. Israel is saying, I did nothing. But you know what has happened in the back end? These Iranis now are shitting in their pants. They have started calling Papa Putin, Papa Putin, Papa Putin, Bachao, Papa Putin, Bachao. You know why? Because they're saying, you, you know, your equipment did not work. But Putin is very clear. Why? This is outdated equipment. I didn't sell you this not as 450 or 400. It's a 300. 300. I think the missile has a range of 80 to 120 kilometers. The, the design which can, which you can. 100, 100. Correct, to, correct, 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 correct. Somewhere around that is the range. So it's not a very potent system. The radars are not there. It's an outdated system. So Putin is saying, look, buddy, it's not my business. You're buying old shit. It's outdated. I never told you. And now they have reached the Russian foreign minister. And to Russian foreign minister, what are they saying? Can you call Israel? Can you call America? Can you tell the whole world we don't want to escalate it? Iranis on record have requested Lavrov. Mr. Lavrov, kindly uncle Lavrov, tell Americans, tell Israelis and tell all the people in the world we don't want to escalate it. Why has Khomeini lost all the steam? Because after Ishfan, Ishfan, whatever the name is, I can't get it somehow right. After it was attacked and where his core of his system was attacked. And we don't know how many F-40s were destroyed. We don't know is the nuclear installation is pretty safe. We know that they had, they had, the Iranis used to boast about underground bunkers. So underground bunkers, are they intact? Is Iranis used to boast about their silos. And if Mossad knows this, Mossad even knows where your silos are. There will be even some missile which will be targeted to your silo now. And let's not forget, Americans have the technology which they demonstrated to China. We can take out all your silos. Americans have the technology. So if Americans give this technology to Israelis, your silos are a, you know, it's a, it's a matter of a half an hour, all your silos are gone. So in this scenario, they are literally panicking. Whatever they thought will work, whatever they thought will deliver has not delivered. And they are waiting for the next big attack of Israel to come. Now, Israel knows his game plan. The unfortunate part is if Khamenei decides to respond with a tactical nuclear weapon, then my assessment that Iranians will unfortunately will not see 26 or 27 maximum. They will not see 26. Then that is that will unfortunately come true because if you do a nuclear strike, even with a tactical weapon, what you will get is the hell. You will get hellfire and your whole country will be decimated. And I'm not being a devil's advocate here, sir, but I want to make one point. It's, it's logic. Huh? It's, it's analysis. It's not, I'm not trying to wish harm to anybody. But unless and until one odd country gets decimated, these people who think they can use terrorist, terrorism as a uh, statecraft, they can, when regimes support Islamic terror as a part of state policy, what I call Iran support militias is, is, you know, uh, state-sponsored Islamic terror. It's state-sponsored Islamic terror because these militias are nothing but state-sponsored Islamic terror. Where the state is sponsoring you, there can be a jihadi organization which can come up. That's a different issue. But when the state is sponsoring you, when the foreign minister is meeting everybody, so there are the two things which will happen. Now, there is another third aspect I forgot to tell you. It was a sleeping moment I got your attention. The third aspect of the Israeli plan is now Israelis are still working on what if there's a tactical strike? What are we going to do now? What is the second thing what Israelis are? Israelis have done one thing which will work beautiful for Israel. Now, with after these attacks, when the Ashwakhan is attacked, there is one message which is sent by, to all jihadis. These all jihadis had their ammunition dumps. 
their base camps and they were protected by some kind of a chinese crap or some kind of those anti you know aircraft missile systems and all now they know they are no match to israel system what they have started they have started deserting those places and have started moving with their arsenal to a different place this is exactly what israel wants you to do israel wants you to leave those places where you think you are safe israel avax israel satellites the best when it comes to satcoms i know israelis i mean after americans or they are equal I think the only two best is Israelis and Americans is between the two, and in some aspects Israelis are better, and in some aspects Americans are better. But world's number one, I I have no hesitation in saying is the Jews and the Israelis are number one because I understand how the set com works. Now, with with this happening, sir, what will happen is these jihadis will start have started moving their arsenal and arms. Israeli set com set satellites and Avax are watching that, and you will see that eventually. These bases will be taken out. Those jihadis will be taken out. Israel, Iranian ports will be taken out. But the only one thing which is not still contemplated is what happens if they retaliate with a tactical warhead. What is going to be the plan? Because I think if they do that, they will be crossing the red line, and then it is swaha. G, you are making some point. So, Mr. G, um, using a nuclear uh, bomb is actually going to wipe out Iran, even assuming that they manage to get it across to Israel and drop it there. The wind. Is blowing from west to east. It will eventually find its way back to Iran. It will wipe out Iran also. I mean, max a lot of casualties, and not only that, it will come to India too. It, it may can, not be the same potency, but it will be there. You are going to have people who are going to be uh, contacting new cancers and other things. This is this is nuclear weapon. <laughs> nuclear usage is not something that you should do without thinking it through. Yeah, that's a very, very dangerous thought process itself. So, um, you know, uh, sorry, I just want to add one more thing. Remember, viewers, you need to go back. We all forget about what happened during Balakot strike. 2019 February, India went and hit back Balakot. Pakistan had to respond. The next day morning, the defense minister said, "Oh, the electricity was down because it was a night time." This was all a facade. They were, they did try to hit back. The problem was India's effective anti-aircraft system made it that they could not even come anywhere along the border, all the way from Gujarat, all the way up to up to POK border. That's why the one plane that they actually got taken down was where the POK border was, not inside India. India they could not come inside. So the, you you have to understand that these are all consequences. Iran should have thought about it before they launched those 300 missiles at Israel. Yeah, they, 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 you know, they have such one-sided, one-track mind. When they do something, they don't remember any of that. But when the response comes back, oh, yeah, yeah. This is happening. oh, this is, I mean, Aj, this is an embarrassment to Smithy. There is a now there is graduation time. People are, you know, having graduation from different universities. One kid goes and disrupts the whole thing in University of Southern California. It's called USC. Inside California, we call it University of Spoiled Children. That's a different matter. <laughs> so USC, I, I'm, I'm, there, I'm sure there are a lot of very good students from USC. Please don't take this personally. It's just a joke. And uh, don't. it's a very good university, by the way. Private university run in, uh, run in Los Angeles. The thing I'm trying to say is that uh, these kinds of things are also happening. Oh, back to you, sir. Yeah, uh, so the point I was trying to make is with with this all this happening. Now the the problem with these, is, you know, you don't have an elected leader, you don't have a selected leader. You are somebody wearing a black gown and having a big beard. That is Khamenei. That that's uh, that's what it is. Neither elected nor selected, inherited. It's a it's that kind of a scenario. Now the problem is that Pak, these people think they have they they have illusions in their mind. A tactical weapon will be responded with a tactical weapon. Tactical weapon is chota weapon, you know, half a kilometer yield, half a kilometer impact radius, or maybe 500 meters or something like that. They think they can respond with that, and you know, it will not. It will be responded with a tactical weapon. The point I'm trying to make clear is, no, you will get a hydrogen bomb in return. If you use even a tactical weapon, they will evaporate the whole country. Don't don't be under this impression. When it comes to Israel and United States of America, if you play this card with them, that will be the end of Iraq. And the country will be decimated. The whole country will be ev evaporated. And don't ever try that because these illiterate Pakistanis will will teach you. Okay, this is a low yield weapon. Nothing will happen. They will respond with an equal weapon. No, they are not going to respond with an equal weapon. It is the threshold. 
it is nuclear or non nuclear if you use nuclear you will get the big you will get the biggest nukes in the world and that will be the end of the iran and khomeini and all will 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 be evaporated now now israel has uh, you know closed a lot of embassies worldwide and they'll be tell you another thing i was reading something very interesting today americans have developed a uh, a new weapon which is which is which is like a kind of a which is a microwave based weapon now it it is it is run in such a way if you drop it near a area it create so much of microwave those radiations and all it will burn or it will make all your equipment redundant your gps gprs whatever your command and control will make it redundant and as per some sources some sources americans have already moved those weapons to the red sea so americans are ahead of the game brother iran were a very it is you are not fighting somebody with a like kalashnikov eh? with 30 meter range no these people are smart don't mess with them they they know what to do and on the meanwhile we have also come to know that qataris are now getting a lot of heat from america get these uh, hamas guys out of here now and there is no other islamic or the middle eastern country who wants to keep them the problem here is if something happens in iran iraq will suffer syria will suffer and other countries which are nearby will also suffer it's not the iran who is going to go up so i my appeal to the islamic world is wake up smell coffee you have to control these morons you have to control these idiots what are they up to trust me swear to god i hope and pray i'm wrong if even they try with a tactical weapon the whole place will be burned down it's gone don't do it don't don't try to do it and those f14s are not they are not they are outdated machines today you have to understand whom you are fighting with america has is up to here with you we don't want to play with you any more nobody wants to play with you any more if you want the middle east to become a desert again and this time a radioactive desert then you should listen to pakistanis but i am telling you sir if a pakistani if ever a nuclear a nuke is discovered in iran you have to trace it back to pakistan there is a pakistan is the only one who can give the nukes meanwhile we know that pakistan has given two air bases to america one which we talked in the gwadar one more is given recently for them to screw iran so pakistan is one thing one thing is good about pakistan they are in the business of jihad anybody who gives them more money they will do jihad for you so americans will be also have also doing their preparations from striking iran from the pakistani side so that is also done and if these jihadi organizations start moving their arsenal and their men they will become easy prey for the you know uh, israeli defense systems and all so that is what israelis exactly wanted to do so this is a three prong strategy one last fell is still being contemplated what happens in a in a kind of a you know in a kind of a tactical attack then what will be the strategy but if what is happening today usa uk france lot of the christian countries whether we like it or not are with israel and we see syria yemen and partly russia and partly china they are with uh what do you call this uh, iran so the world is getting frank, broken into the parts i think out of the big four only india has to take its side and i think india has to logically take the side of israel because we don't have option israel is our all time friend and all we have to go and stand with israel though we want peace everywhere but if push comes to shove it we have to take a push with the israel you are saying something you know israel is not only all time friend for india it's also all weather friend for india it doesn't matter sometimes you know india will go and you know criticize you uh, israel in un but they'll always have a back channel open saying look we have to do this thing because we have you know some domestic interest that we need to make sure but i think it is becoming increasingly clear by the way united states has slapped sanctions on pakistan zardar yeah. is jumping up and down like a hot cat on a hot tin roof frog frog <laughs> frog <laughs> frogs get roasted after some time cat doesn't get roasted <laughs> so is and, and, and i'm also yeah i'm also reading that hamas leadership is trying to uh, <laughs> leave qatar qatar mana said look ke look i can't <laughs> i can't handle any more and nobody is willing to keep them now but 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 they can always be they can be very respectfully kept in gotanamo bay i think that's a very decent place for these people we they can they can be taken good care there and there's one more development which has come in one is this pakistan getting these sanctions and uh, there was one thing why is it slipped my mind there was one thing very important about ha by the way now in this game pakistan's ispr and they are trying hard to get india into the game you know why they have started a propaganda 
these bastards started uh, sorry to use this word i'm sorry again they started a propaganda what are they saying they are saying that there was a there was a there was a resolution in united nations where india was supposed to vote against uh, you know india voted for an mgh ceasefire in gaza so it's okay but there was a, again one more resolution which said that we should have arms embargo to israel and india said no they are saying that because adani aerospace makes drones and these drones are given to israel and israel is using these drones to kill the innocent civilians in gaza now you know you know whenever adani aerospace is making drones and there are a lot of companies in hyderabad which i know they are making drones and state of art drones fantastic drones now if you look at a drone ecosystem india is number 2 or number 3 in the world already now when we sell drones there is a there is a there is a there are some agreements which have to be taken care of before we selling them now once we have sold the drones it the discretion is on the party who is buying it how do they want to use it you know drones are a multi purpose weapon they can use it whatever way but by doing this they are somehow trying to drag india into it saying that india is facilitating genocide in gaza and because of the indian arms industry israelis are able to kill palestinians who are muslims in gaza so this is another canard which ispr brigade is very decently trying to you know swing around and and i tell you who the ring leader is the ring leader is a, lives in america he is a botak guy he is a bald guy who lives in america and calls dollar dollar and he is giving the directions to all these youtubers one of them is in america a couple of them in pakistan they all are singing the same tone and these guys between themselves are playing the good cop bad cop good cop bad cop now this baldy doesn't seem to know that you know uh, these unknown gunman can be activated anywhere i don't know who these unknown gunman are god knows sir matlab kon kahan aa jaye kya aa jaye so this baldy has to understand you know sir 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 ek minute ek minute ek minute ek minute you know what happened brahma hmm. created a few perfect heads <laughs> and on the others he put hair <laughs> so aaj ka ab we will not call them baldies we'll call them perfect heads ha perfect heads no i wanted to give his this i'm not i'm not being sarcastic i wanted to give his description so people will get the whom i am talking about i the person calls dollar 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 right <laughs> now people will know who i am mentioning about it is not i am not trying to stereotype anybody but it's just for a i am these are plausible hints which i am throwing to the people so people understand now he has become the ring leader and he is taking all the directions from isi now he is playing this good cop bad cop with the youtubers and they are all trying to peddle a narrative now we know what you are doing we know what is happening here we know how the things are done here and you know world is a small place so do not try to drag india into that india has nothing to do with this is not our war we are not going to fight this war and push comes to shove between i think israel and iran i think modi ji will go for israel will choose israel because as a natural ally that's where the civilized world is and we don't want to be where with the people where pakistans and north koreans are standing with them. we don't want to be seen in that camp for sure and as i've been telling you sir five people as long as they survive this world can any day go into a world war again the number list has never changed all these years asim munir or who is in the place of asim munir xi jinping khameni kim and obama as long as these five people are surviving on planet earth they can bring world to any day to a world war exhibition and this is exactly what is happening this is exactly what is happening there and now if this happens what happens between Taiwan and China because the Taiwan's foreign minister has already raised a concern. What happens between Russia, Ukraine, Azerbaijan, Armenia, Pakistan, and uh, Afghanistan? Because in my prediction, June, July there will be a big war between Pakistan and Afghanistan. What happens between India and China? Like Galwan or a Kargil kind of skirmish? What happens those? So what happens between North Korea and South Korea? What happens between China, Japan, China, Philippines? By the way, yesterday we shipped the first plane, a load of Brahmos to Philippines. So it is shipped and it must have landed in Philippines today. So all our friends in Philippines must be happy. So there, there are a lot of small theaters of war which will erupt because if this war enhances or if this war elongates. Bolo tara ra ra, ha? Bolo tara ra 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 tara ra ra ra. Bolo, bilkul bilkul. Bolo tara ra ra. So. The, we the, why why do i say you see brother why do i say this because i want to tell them we know your game we understand your game and we are ahead of the game when we know and understand your game we are ahead of the game we let you play wo kehte hai na you know when we were playing cricket i was a kid and my younger brother or my younger cousin used to come then my father would say are khelne do na 
will just give few uh, full toss balls, couple of full toss, so that he can hit one or two, and he'll be very happy. So my friends were giving you a couple of lollipops, full toss balls to play. But just let to give you net practice, net practice. But we know the game. We know when to do what. So you are a propaganda is not going to work in Iran. And India will do whatever is in its national interest. If we can sell rose to whomever we want. We don't have only Adani. We have a lot of people because you want to get Adani, Modi, Pakistan. Genocide, Gaza. You want to relate these two. No, it's not only Adani Aerospace. A lot of us companies make drones. And we are, we are selling weapons to 95 countries. Jihadi, 95 countries. So don't give us lessons to whom to sell and what to sell. We'll sell to whomever we want. Your Githa, Nata, French Cut, Takla, you know, lipstick, nail polish, Jihad, they will be of no use to us. You're wasting your time and energy. And one of them they have kept also in America to give it a neutral, you know, I'm neutral, I'm an American, I'm sting in America. And some have temporarily come and made their base in America. It doesn't matter. We know what you are up to. So our people are ahead in the game. This is what is happening there. We, my prediction is, is a big attack from Iran, uh, sorry, Israel, which is coming, and that will have a substantial impact on Iran. I would hope good sense prevails in Iran, and they take care of Mr. Khomeini and whatever best is in their national interest, and live peacefully with the world. If they are not able to do that, if they are not able to handle this Frankenstein called Khomeini. And if they, you listen to Pakistanis and you try what the stunts Pakistanis will tell you, then there will be no 26. That is unfortunate part of it. I am direct. I am telling you direct. There will be no 26 for you. Take my word today. And by the grace of God, patani kya kripa hai, whatever I say, 99% of the things come true. That is my track record so far. So I am warning you in advance. Don't try this. Don't listen to Pakistanis. Huh? They are the last people you can be listening to. And if you have these tactical warrants and all, hand them over to International Atomic Energy Commission, declare them, hand them over, hand your all activated uranium and live in peace. And think of mutual coexistence. That is the good for people of Iran, Republic of Iran, because our people don't, innocent people don't need to die there. For one one man who has some fantasies about him being some uh, reincarnation of God or something which is beyond human. So let's not get into that. And my one warning to Pakistan and China, don't think we are in the election and you know everybody is busy there. This is your time to do whatever you want to do. Don't do it. Because if you do it this time, after 4th June, you are going to have it what like you have never got it before. Never ever try to do it. And Pakistanis, let me give you one last message. You are not even going to get one nickel. Ek paisa nahi milega, baba. I've been telling you from day one. See, I told you you will not get one nickel. Nobody will talk to you. Nobody will even address you. Nobody will even respond to you. See, I predicted this and nobody did. And let me tell you another thing. You're not going to get one nickel from us. Not even a cent from Bharat. Bharat will not give you a cent. Go live and die. And if you think you can get our Prime Minister, Honorable Prime Minister to come to table and talk using this influence, that influence, this leader, that leader, that day is never going to come. That day will never come on planet Earth. We do whatever is in our supreme national interest. Nobody can make our honorable prime minister to come on a table and talk to you or talk for you and talk through you, whatever. Stop selling that churan. You know what is churan? That what you've been selling for the last 75 years. Islam, Jihad, Kashmir, Gazwain. Stop selling that churan. That is not going to work anywhere. And I'm telling you well in advance. I tell you a good friend in the US, stop playing these drama, these epic dramas on YouTube. We know what you are. We know what you said about when the Chandrayaan was launched. I don't want to put out these videos, but if you push me, I all the videos, I'm going to put them one day on P Guru, and one more person will be decimated and gone out of the business. So take it my final warning. Do it again, I'll put all your videos. Yeah? Then? Thank you so much, uh, Sumitji. Let's take some questions now, please. Magnet Ranga, almost always he's the first one with the question. Uh, how could oil prices, uh, how would oil prices affect Bharat in view of Middle East turmoil? Is Bharat equipped to handle the fallout given that the opposition would be breathing down the neck of Modi ji? Uh, Ranga sir, in all honesty, oil is a bit of a problem for the entire world because there are not a lot of reserves for everybody. But for, for, for some good amount of time, we'll be able to handle the situation. And let me tell you, uh, this uh, Iran thing will not last long because if Israel wants to do it, they will do it pretty fast and swift. They are not going to drag it. It's not a Russian Ukrainian conflict to drag for months and months and months. So it's not going to drag for that. But yes, oil is going to be a bit of a challenge. So we'll also know who are our friends and who are not our friends. So in that time, you know, Saudis and all and all, they have to you know, really come up and 
not try to make money because you can make money from us once, but there's no second time. Next one, please. RP wants to know, Bahut Indian YouTubers call Pakistani lipstick and sari jihad hai. What do you have to say about that? I would request everybody not to call these Pakistanis because they all work for ISPR. We all know that. Why are we giving ISPR and their agents media platforms? That is what we have to do, decide collectively as a nation. We don't need Pakistanis for anything. You know, it's, it's like do Americans call with due respect. I don't know. Don't try to repeat. Do, do, do Americans call somebody from Congo to talk on American politics? No. Does Americans talk on a national TV on Congo politics? No. So what is Pakistan with us? Pakistan is, is a piece of S. You know what S stands for? S-H dot dot. You know, not anything is S, H and two dots is a piece of this. So why do we need to give them some importance? Who are they? They are nobody. They, we should not give them any platform. Let them go to hell. Let them go on the TV Rwanda. I mean, that's where they should go. Or TV Congo. When we do respect to Rwanda and Congo. But I'm telling you, there is no comparison with India and Pakistan. So their opinions, their thinking, their thought, it doesn't matter to us. We don't give a damn to who they, they live, survive or perish in the sea. Let them do whatever they want to do. Indranil Banerjee wants to know, Dear Sirs, correct me if I am wrong. Iran supported creation, creation of Islamic Pakistan in 1947. Yeah, correct, sir. That, that's correct. Iran supported that creation of Islamic Pakistan. You are right, sir. British did it, yeah. I mean, there is... Uh, what can we British, say? British wanted uh, that. Even uh, in 1857, there is a British map, sir. Which is in Pakistan archives. In 1857, they were even named Pakistan. 1857. How did they know that this area will be Pakistan? This will be named as Pakistan. So everybody was put in place, you know. And uh, so people play these games. And you are right, we have a portion of breathing them on next, so it's going to be a bit of a challenge. But you know, my friend, there are some, you know, what Swami Vivekananda rightly said you can avoid wars, but there are some wars which you have to fight to survive. It's not yeah. our war, but if we have to fight that war to survive, we have to fight that war. We can't run away. You know, it's, it's like one of my friends used to joke. If I go to the forest, I am very safe. I said, why? Because I'm a vegetarian. I said, but the tiger is not vegetarian. Why? So let's not go into that scenario. <laughs> if there's a war, we can't say we don't fight with anybody. People will be nice to us. No, we have to learn to fight our wars. We don't have to go and buy a war. But if it starts to on us, we have to fight and win. There's no other option. Yeah. Next one, please. Harris Tyagraj wants to know, Dear Sir, Iran officials in USA for discussion now. What is the outcome, please? Iran is cribbing, brother. Iran is worried. They cannot, they, they have, you see, Khomeini's dream got shattered. He thought he has this Chinese and Russian things and all. He can do this. He can, his, maybe his, his revolutionary guard called Aslam, like, we will do this. We'll do this, inshallah, inshallah. But but Khamenei forgot, he must have said, his commander 20 times before, must have said, inshallah, inshallah. What does inshallah mean? Link? Allah willing. That means no guarantee. Bhagavan ne chaha to. That's what he said. So now, he doesn't have the capability to face America, allies, Israel, and then attack on Americans, attack on NATO. Then NATO together. Who can face them? This man is hallucinating. He is high on something. I don't know what. You have to get a medical medical checkup done. They go, kya hai khun mein? You have to check what is in the blood. You, you must, it must not be normal. Next one, please. Sarvani Tumaluri wants to know, Sumitji got to know that USA sanctioned a few Pakistani companies which export ballistic missile parts. Also heard some Chinese, Japanese people were dead in Pakistan. Please explain what's happening. Uh, yeah, the, the ban part is completely true, ma'am. And that is why Shri Sir was saying that uh, Shabash Sharif is jumping like a frog on a hot tin shirt and hope he gets, uh, hold the, hope, hope the uh, tin is hot enough. I'm hoping, uh, hoping, hoping, with my fingers crossed. Second thing is, ma'am, uh, this, we know that there was an attack yesterday. My sources tell me two Chinese engineers were killed and Japanese got attacked because the attackers thought they were Chinese because they look like Chinese. Unfortunately, no Japanese was kind of killed, but two Chinese engineers were called. This is the fourth or fifth targeted attack on Chinese. While as Mariam Nawaz, Mariam Nawaz Sharif, a daughter of Nawaz Sharif, has given a statement because Chinese don't follow security protocols. But luckily, none of the Japanese got killed, which are our friends. Two Chinese have lost their life, but the Pakistan says nobody got killed. 
the suicide bomber and uh, there's two accomplices and a couple of policemen also got killed but pakistan is trying to cover that news because chinese will run away from china and so will the chinese money whatever is left so unfortunately japanese got hit because they look like chinese you know they thought you know they are not able to differentiate the japanese or chinese so what is the message message is for all south asian countries thai japanese chinese koreans baba don't go to pakistan they will think you are chinese right no nakko never go to pakistan very unsafe country krishnaveni tk wants to know why nobody is talking of hostages held by hamas why they were not releasing the entire hostages i think they you have to go it you have to look around two and a half three months back where benjamin netanyahu said we may not be able to get every hostage back it was a very important shit i think i reiterated that in one of the vlogs yes yes i agree i totally agree i remember that yeah he said we will not be able to so that message was very clear now possibly they are not coming and may who knows they are alive sir in all probability they are dead who even knows they are alive with so much of bombing happening and so much of destruction do you think these jihadis will keep the hostages alive i mean i have i have seen one on video i don't want to talk here you know how mercilessly they were raping a jewish girl i have seen that video i mean it's atrociously horrible i can't describe this so with all probability these hostages are dead so when how can you get the dead man back that's the reality of life sir in fact there there strikes going on inside rafa today even as we speak so israel had all these things planned out they first wanted to tell iran uh, you know you know where your place is and then they are now going about thought provocateur thank you so much uh, saudi sharif ko bola aapko 5 arab milenge aur 5 arab pakistan mein aakar unse mile pakistan khush bangla khush dekhiye bangla karo ha dekhiye the saudis have promised him 5 billion dollars as saudis are coming to pakistan the notion which pakistani government is giving they are coming from feasibility study and on they are not they are coming to look at the accounts how much we have given you all these years what all they have mortgaged and what are we are going to retain the control of that mortgage because even saudis know that it's a matter of months pakistan will disintegrate after it disintegrates where are they going to get their pound of flesh from so if if i have your mortgage the port to me let me at least take the control of that port right so that is what the, even the uae should do even every country should do that they should go and take the control of their pound of flesh but our pakistan have mortgage even after the 5 billion coming still they cannot pay 28 billion so pakistan is was and will be bankrupt that is why they were trying to run this propaganda oh so these and uae can get prime minister modi khan marod ke unko layenge baat chit by you know on the string table i told them i told them koi baap ka beta paida hi nahi hua कोई माइकल लाल पैदा ही नहीं हुआ जो मोदी जी का सो कॉल तुम्हारी भाषा में कान मरोड़ के उन्हें नेगोशिएशन टेबल पे लाए इस खाबे गफलत में रहना भूल जाओ कयामत शायद पहले आ जाए ये दिन उससे पहले नहीं आएगा ये मैं तुम्हें आज कह रहा हूं हिंदी में बिकॉज हिंदी में यू विल अंडरस्टैंड बेटर बिकॉज दीज पीपल डोंट अंडरस्टैंड इंग्लिश सर दे ऑल मदरसा मदरसा हिंदी में बोलना पड़ता तो जहांगीर गोटला थैंक यू सो मच will mohabbat ki dukan go out of business this business does not practice diversity and inclusivity so shouldn't government take legal action i think uh, you know uh, you have to mohabbat ki dukan you mean congress uh, yeah mo- congress if i if i'm getting you correctly jahangir ji congress is already out of the business you i'll tell you something very interesting i asked this question to one of this spokesperson yesterday and the lady was you know she was sweating i asked her i said look ma'am If you look at the poll of polls, you are projected to get forty-five to fifty seats. I said yes. I said why Congress is not fighting in UP? She said, oh, you know, because coil now coil, what uh, no? Uh, Alliance there. I said, mm-hmm. I, I said first you said coalition there, but loot the country and close by. Then you said saffron terror, which again, you know, was an egg on your face. Then you are saying Alliance there. I said okay, you are not fighting uh, in UP, so you will not form a government. No, this is Alliance there, my Alliance there. I said good man. Now why do you do Alliance? you do a alliance to win more seats right even after alliance if your tally is less than last time that means a disaster after alliance okay you will not form the government but from 50 if you are coming to 80 seats i'll say you are alliance has worked that she was pretending i don't understand i said let me tell you let's say you are alliance with tmc in west bengal if there's no alliance you will go and fight with tmc maybe bjp will win now you have alliance with tmc tmc says okay you fight here i am not going to have my candidate even after those alliances even after cannibalizing your party even after cannibalizing your uh, your your stakes on forming a government then you are less than the last time that means you are decimated already 
right you are decimated mathematically you are decimated so you will go out of business and uh, that is what will happen and and rahul gandhi today has one prime minister he has said that after the lok sabha elections are declared there will be uh, arg and some some you know arg and there will be tandav everywhere something i can't remember the proper words but there will be chaos and uh, death and destruction everywhere i don't know how rahul gandhi gets these hallucinations last time he said kerosene har jagah chhidko matches ki teli ki zarurat hai so you know these these things are they talk of that he has lost the plot and if you look at yesterday is what uh, you know we estimated what the Results look like yesterday. I think, in my opinion, is six sixty nine to seventy two BJP led ND, and that's what yesterday looks like out of hundred nine. So, and yesterday's phase was not a BJP ND phase. And in Tamil Nadu, sir, people are talking of twelve thirty, and that is what we have been project. I've been projecting double digits since the other. So let's see how it goes. And anyway, Jahangirji, these people will go out of the business very soon. No problem. And, and if if you guys want a complete deconstruction of what happened in Tamil Nadu, there has been some mischief. Um, what, do watch Sri Ram Seshadri's hangout with me that aired at nine a.m. today in the morning, and that's available on YouTube channel of P Guru. So do go back and watch that one. Very very revealing. Very very systematically analyzed. So Prasad BSB wants to know: Will Russia enter this war? Looks like S four hundred air defense will be given to Iran. Uh, Prasadji, there are two things to it. Russia will not enter a war where America is there. Take my word. And Russians and Americans do not confront each other. That is a sure shot. World War Three. Um, then you know we don't have to even contemplate that. So even China will not confront America anywhere. That is again a given, right? And Russia will never support China if it is confronting United States of America. Now, if you will Russia enter the war? No, Russia will not enter the war. They will try to give some arms supplies here and there. What America is doing in Ukraine? They exactly do the same order. Will S will S four hundred be given to Iran, sir? S four hundred. Even if you give an order today, it will take you two to three years to get them up and running. Does Iran have three years? They don't. I don't know. Even they have the next three months. So S four hundred is too late now. Water under with under the bridge, sir. No use now. Next one, please. Siddharth Shekhar, thank you so much. Israel Israel has given a strategic weapon systems like the Spider ADS, Barak eight, and more. Israel secretly helped India. In the seventy-one war, why is India acting like a coward and not helping Israel? Jordan can Israel, India can't. Uh, Shekhar ji, how do you know India is not doing it? There are a lot of things in geopolitics and diplomacy which you do. You don't talk about it. When you have to shoot, you shoot. Don't talk about it. Yeah, when it comes to supporting Israel, when it comes to black and white support, like uh, Indian Prime Minister Prime Minister Modi was the first one who supported Israel when the Hamas attack was there. So when push comes to shove, we will support. In my personal opinion, Israel. And what Israel needs, we'll be already providing them. Israel is our friends, and we'll do everything and anything to help them. And that is why Pakistanis were trying to get Adani drones, Palestine genocide, Indian military, and Indian it was into. They were trying to spin a story around it. That is what the perfect heads, uh, so-called perfect head strategy was. And uh, speaking of Congress, uh, that's the last uh, point. I just wanted to end on one small uh, information for our viewers. Speaking of Congress, yesterday uh, the Home Minister in Karnataka was trying to brush off N not only the Home Minister, even the Chief Minister, about that incident where one Muslim boy killed his uh, stabbed to death his junior, and this was a love jihad case. And the father right. said that this is love jihad. You guys are trying to. I mean, he was so disappointed. He was a Congress corporator from Hubli, and and uh, today the Home Minister has apologized. But the thing is, I think even that forty seats that you said, Sumiji, forty seats. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There is a bit of a risk there. I don't <laughs> know how much it impacted Tamil Nadu because it was not very widespread at that point of time. So we don't know if that would affect Congress's prospects in Tamil Nadu. But look at the arrogance. There is a, there is a. We are going to give you some more videos in the next few hours. You will understand what I mean by that. So, Vijay, thank you so much. We have another program coming up in an hour's time with Shaker Iyerji. We are going to be deep diving into Indian elections, politics, next round, and all that good stuff. Sir, let us take the Ashirwad of Mahadev before we sign off. And uh, I think I was looking somewhere, you know, just on my phone. I think that person has resigned from Congress. The gentleman which you are mentioning, and he has oh, said that. So I think he has resigned from Congress. So, brother, it will not happen. And uh, you know, and that is the way to do because if your own children are subjected to this, what can you do? How long can you be, uh, you know, how long you can be a psychopath to Raj Rahul Gandhi? And that that's the, practically what it is. 
so on that note i think uh, i have to again appeal to you you have to like share and subscribe you have to make sure you send it share it on your whatsapp groups because the message has to go loud and clear brother there are a lot of people who are trying to scuttle our voices and there's a lot of this ispr brigade and a lot of people who don't want our channel to grow who don't want this video to go your like and your share is the only weapon which we have so i am appealing and i am trusting and banking you are going to do it on that note thank you all very much bharat mata ki jai vande mataram and har 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 mahadev